Hi, I'm Thomas Fry. I'm the executive director of the Da Vinci Institute and also the senior futurist there. So my job is to help stretch people's imaginations about the future. We're shifting from uh, a just-in-case mindset to a just-in-time mindset. We have lots of things that we own just in case we're going to need them. Um, hospitals, um, uh, manufacturing facilities always have lots of inventory just in case we're going to need that product sometime in the future. Um, as we begin working with 3D printers, as we begin working with other technologies, we can manage to create a just-in-time supply chain. Um, the, the world of self-driving cars is a real good example. I mean, we're, we have a car in our garage or out in front of our house just in case we need it. Um, if we could summon a vehicle to be there at a time when we need it, anytime we need it, um, we could eliminate the need to have that, um, this huge resource occupying space for the vast majority of the day. Uh, when, when it comes to uh, utilization of natural resources, that's a terrible waste of, uh, uh, of resources. Uh, most of our cars only get used somewhere between three to five percent of a day, and the rest of the time it's sitting in a garage or a parking lot. Um, and so as we get into the driverless car era, if you can imagine walking out in front of your, your house, pulling out your smartphone and then punching in, I want to go to school, I want to go to shopping, or I want to go to work, and a driverless vehicle comes, picks you up, takes you to where you want to go. As it drops you off, it picks somebody else up from there, takes them to where they want to go. So these vehicles will be constantly in circulation. That becomes what we call on-demand transportation. Uh, that begins to shift us from just-in-case mindset to just-in-time mindset. Um, uh, on the same, uh, in a similar vein, uh, the world of 3D manufacturing enables us to create a product at the time we need it rather than to have lots of inventory sitting around. Um, so as an example, Lee Cronin, uh, who's a professor at the University of Glasgow in Scotland, uh, is working on a pill printer. He's developing a, a 3D printer that can print any pharmaceutical drug. Um, so this one machine could replace an entire pharmacy. Um, naturally, the big pharmaceutical companies aren't going to have any trouble at all with this, but uh, <laughs> I'm being facetious. <laughs> the, uh, uh, the idea that you could have a machine that suddenly offers um, uh, pharmaceutical care for people in third world countries that uh, otherwise don't have access to it. It also eliminates all of the transportation costs, all the logistics costs. There's managing all these supply chains is, is hugely complicated and very cost intensive. I, I like to use this example of uh, perfect water. Um, now there is no such concept of perfect water, but I always think of, um, you know, we, we all know that polluted water is bad for us. And if we take everything out of the water and distill it, that that's less than optimal. But in this whole spectrum of, of water, there's a uh, one piece of that segment that's perfect for us at that given moment in time. And so um, with this concept of perfect water, theoretically there's like over 7 billion formulations of perfect water. And these 7 billion formulations change every second of every day as our metabolism changes. Now, we don't have the ability to work with that level of precision today to create perfect water for every moment of every day. But in the near future, we will have the ability to work with that level of precision. So if you go to your uh, doctor and he prescribes some medicine for you, it's either 200 milligrams or 400 milligrams, when the ideal dosage might be 147 milligrams, 368 milligrams, Again, we don't have the ability to work that level of precision just yet. But if we had a pill printer like that, then we could actually print our pharmaceutical drugs perfect for that moment in time. Uh, that changes a lot of things.